What are you doing here, big brother? I should be asking you that. That's easy. I'm not real. It's your excuse. For fans of Richard K. Morgan's books, the Netflix adaptation of Altered Carbon has been a long time coming. We've reviewed the series and given it two synthetic thumbs up, so make sure to catch our spoiler-filled review here on GS Universe. But for those book fans who are interested in seeing what's been chopped and changed, then this video is for you. Because as it turns out, a lot has changed. Some for the better, like the sex scenes actually being sexy instead of this. She leaned over me, breasts swinging, and I craned and sucked hungrily at the elusive globes. She was burning inside, gripping me with the liquid entirety of hot bath water and the heated globes of her buttocks. And then the motion. And some for the worse. So without further ado, here's the five biggest changes between the book and the show. Spoilers ahead for both, obviously. One of the first changes you'll notice is the AI hotel that Kovach stays in. In the show, we know it as The Raven, a gothic-themed boarding house run by an AI version of famed poet Edgar Allan Poe. But in the book, it's a little more psychedelic in nature. It's called The Hendrix and comes complete with a huge holocast of the man himself hanging above the front door and themed rooms like the Watchtower Suite and the Midnight Lamp Bar. And while Kovach and co do get to meet a version of Jimmy while they're in virtuality, the actual day-to-day -day proprietor of the Hendrix is a 30-something blonde female AI. Personally, I prefer the show's interpretation of the hotel with its union meetings and comic relief moments. I can assist you in the time on a position of the Seamus's dependable and steadfast partner. Hmm? Partner's frequently murdered. Alas, me being an AI makes that uh, less likely. According to Altered Carbon's showrunner, later Caligridis, the reason that the Hendrix was switched to the Raven was... I mean, you can guess this, but it's because of the Hendrix estate. They have very specific rules about how much violence can be associated with any character that looks like Jimi Hendrix. And as you might have noticed, there's a lot of violence, so we changed it. In my case, it really was just looking at it going, you know, father of the modern detective story. I mean, who can you think of who's about as far from Jimi Hendrix as you can? Let's just go in the opposite direction. And that's where Poe came from. A huge change is the relationship between Rey and Takeshi. In the show, they're siblings, but in the book, they are not related at all. So in the book, Kovacs' backstory is as follows. He grew up on Harlan's world. His father was a drunk who beat him and his mother, and it's insinuated that he pimped her out. One day, Kovac's father is re-sleeved into a new body and abandons his family. So Kovac never got that resolution of killing him, sparing SeaTac into recruiting him. Instead, Kovac joins the UN Protectorate forces at the age of 17. He serves for a few years, and then he gets recruited into the Envoy Corps. After a harrowing incident at Ininin on the planet Sharia, where Kovac witnessed his friend De Soto being driven insane by a viral strike, he leaves the envoys and joins the criminal underworld, working for Raylene Kawahara, one of the seven most powerful people in the solar system. Kind of the complete opposite to the show, but I can see why they did it. See, in the book, Raylene is not his sister. She grew up working willfully for the Yakuza, making people who didn't pay what they owed drink contaminated water. She worked her way up the ranks of the criminal underworld and eventually became a meth. She was running things on New Beijing, which is where Kovach was working for her, before he was arrested and put on ice. Also, Ray is not the person who betrays the envoys. In the show, we see that Ray is forced into joining the Yakuza and wants nothing more than to be reunited with her brother. Their being together is her main motivation for everything she does. And when the two of them end up joining the envoys, she's firmly against the envoy plan to stop people from living forever by sleeve switching. Which is why she sells out the envoys, resulting in a huge viral strike which kills almost all of them, but allows her and Kovach to escape to safety. In the book, the envoy attack is actually the fault of a negligent general, and after witnessing his friend turn mad by it, this spurs Kovach into leaving the envoys for good. 
Rey's motivation is that she's just a stone-cold bitch who doesn't care about the people beneath her. There's no envoy resistance or uprising plotline, and, well, this actually leads us quite nicely into the next massive change. In the books, the Envoy Corps are an elite group of shock troopers who have neurochemical upgrades, behavioral conditioning, and total recall, making them the iron fist of the UN Protectorate. They are able to quickly needle cast to anywhere that political unrest may arise and quash it before it becomes a problem. In the show, they seem to have most, if not all, of the same upgrades and capabilities, but we see them as a small group of soldiers hiding from the regular SeaTac soldiers and they commit guerrilla hit-and-run attacks whenever and wherever they can. In the book, Kovac was a member of the UN Protectorate Forces before he was selected to join the envoys. There, he was trained by a woman named Virginia Vidora. That's right, Virginia Vidora, not Quelchrist Falconer. In the book, it's Virginia who gives the awesome weakness of weapons speech and trains Kovac to become the fearsome soldier that we know him as. Quell in the book is a long dead historical figure, writer, revolutionary leader, and founder of the religion Quellism. Kovac doesn't actually get to meet her until the third novel, Woken Furies, but throughout this first novel, he frequently quotes from the books that she's written, which is very different to what we got in the show. Yep, it seems like they mashed the character of Quell up with Sarah, who's Kovac's girlfriend, the one whose stack Ray is holding hostage. Caligridis explained why she made those crucial changes. I love Quell Christ Falconer so much as a character. I just love her, and the idea that I would have to wait until season three for her and Kovac to ever intersect, when I didn't know if I was even going to get a season two, I sort of like, well, you know, I can hedge my bets on that a little bit. And then once they sort of made that decision, everything that is in the first book, that's Virginia Vidora teaching the envoys, started to feel like Quell's voice. And as soon as you're there, then it's like, okay, if Quell is teaching the envoys and Quell's been dead a long time, you see how this happens. So now let's talk about all the changes that have been made to the other characters in the show. Ortega is given much, much more to do. Her family life is explored in more detail, and she gets that fantastic little storyline where she spins her abuela up for Dia de los Muertos. She gets that cool elevator fight scene, a bionic arm, goes to the fight drone with Kovac, gets kidnapped by Rey and the Ghost Walker. In the book, she actually goes voluntarily to buy Kovac some time, and the list really goes on and on. She has so much more to do in the show. Another interesting little change is that in the book, her partner is a guy named Rodrigo Batista, not Abud, who is for some reason dating her mother. Prescott, Bancroft's lawyer, is also fleshed out a little more in the show. We see her as a ground-born human, desperate to become a meth by doing their dirty work. When she's falsely accused of wrongdoing and is sent crashing back down to the ground, as the audience, we're happy to see it happen. We are seeing this woman get her comeuppance, apparently. But in the book, she's just a lawyer and is actually more sympathetic towards Kovac, and she's well aware that the meths are bad news. The Bancroft family themselves have had a few tweaks and changes too. In the book, we don't actually really come into contact with their children, either in their own sleeves or in their parents. The subplot where Isaac hops into his father's clone doesn't happen either. And we certainly don't get that scene where Lawrence Bancroft goes to the slums and dies by touching all those infected people. Another interesting change is this guy. He's Ray's sidekick, the ghost walker who believes in something and does all of her dirty work for her. In the book, it's a woman named Trep who is downloaded into a synthetic sleeve and actually has a change of heart at the end of the book, betraying Ray in order to give Kovac a fighting chance. There's also this really fun chapter where she and Kovac have a night on the town and get absolutely hammered, but I guess I can understand why that was cut. Vernon Elliott, or as he's known in the book, Victor, is actually hardly in it at all. Ava, or as she's known in the book, Irene, does, however, get to play a big part in bringing down Raylene, and has way more of a character arc. She also doesn't get cross-sleeved into a man's body. She gets put into a random woman's body, because as it turns out, some corporate negotiator bought her sleeve and only wears it on alternate months. The massive change with the Elliot family comes with their daughter, Lizzie. 
So in the show, she's stuck in this trauma loop, undergoing psychosurgery by Poe in VR, and she's training to become an absolute bloody badass, and she saves Kovacs' ass at the end. Yeah, so in the book, Lizzie is maybe mentioned, like, a handful of times. None of the stuff with her on Head in the Clouds happens in the book at all, and actually what they did in the show was they mixed her story with a different subplot, which was that of the prostitute Layla Begins, who is actually the woman who was forced to miscarry by being attacked by Miriam Bancroft. Caligridis explains why she made those key changes. The straightforward reason was that within the book, an awful lot of discussion exists around the women who are the victims of Bancroft's violence, whether directly or indirectly. And for me, I wasn't really interested in them having no voices or very little voice. But what my stories do have is women who fight back and frequently fight back successfully. The way that ties back round to Lizzie is in the original novel, Kovach goes up there and wins all on his own. In the series, Lizzie saves his ass. If it weren't for Lizzie coming up to get him and Ortega going back for him, he wouldn't have won. They would not have triumphed if it weren't for the women. And finally, that infamous torture scene. In episode four, Kovach is taken to the Way Clinic and tortured to death in virtuality over and over and over again. He's attacked with a blowtorch, that weird bug thing is placed inside him, and he's set on fire. It's grim. But in the book, he's deliberately re-sleeved into a female body, one that's just about to get her period because that's when a woman is perceived to be at her most vulnerable. Let me read out what happens to Kovach in a woman's sleeve. There's no kind of conditioning in the known universe that can prepare you for having your feet burnt off or your nails torn out. Cigarettes stubbed out on your breasts, a heated iron inserted into your vagina. The pain, the humiliation, the damage. Speaking to io9, Caligridis revealed, the whole point of that scene in the book is, I believe the quote is, women are the race. Men are just fucking fighting machines. We have more nerves per square inch, we have heightened pain tolerance, we last longer. And the point of torturing a woman is that she feels more and she endures longer. You can't get that across on television. There's just no way. It's going to turn into some torture porn thing, and I wasn't comfortable with that. So there we are, the five biggest changes to Altered Carbon as it went from page to stream. There were actually many, many more that I uncovered as I was reading through the book, and I assume there will be a giant Reddit thread full of all of the changes, but these are the five biggest ones. What did you think about what they changed? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know in the comments below or come find me on Twitter. I'm at Lucy James Games. And for more on Altered Carbon, including our spoiler-filled review and our selection of the best and most brutal moments, make sure to subscribe here to GameSpot Universe, and I'll see you next time.